Welcome back citizens, JT McRoberts here with you once again from Comic Jutsu. And today we're going to talk about what else but the so-called Jim Lee art controversy. Honestly, I can't even believe that we're going to talk about this because it is, the whole thing is just absurd to me. I saw this, this hubbub pop up from the fringes of my internet explorations this week you know of course I go like many of you I'm a member of many many comic groups fan pages you know Twitter groups forums what have you and I saw murmurings and rhubarb rhubarb apple pie of people complaining about this this Jim Lee uh, price pricing for his commissioned artwork and I didn't pay any attention to it, but then it just kept growing and growing and growing. And it actually got bigger because it seemed like, for the most part, that comics professionals were were united in saying, yeah, that's right, he should charge those prices. So, <laughs> so to sum this up, you know, I'll, I'll quote the great American poet Taylor Swift. Because players going to play, 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 play. Haters going to hate, 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 hate. And that's where we are. This is the sad state of comic bookdom in 2024. <laughs> I don't even know. There's, I could just end the video right here. But I'll show you a few examples before we get started. Okay. So let's take a look then. Shall we? No, not that. This. Here's an example on the left. Jim Lee Ghost Rider Original Art Sketch 12 by 9 buy it now $26,000 on eBay I've done my best to mark out the names of all the, uh, the various speculators and complainers that I'm going to show you here throughout this video on the right you have a beautiful absolutely gorgeous piece of Jim Lee Deathblow artwork I think his Deathblow artwork is, is his finest style. I actually prefer that over everything else that he does. Though when his X-Men work was coming out with in conjunction with Scott Williams inking, you know, to me it was the greatest thing since Sylvester and, and John Byrne and John Romita Jr. and Paul Smith. You know, there's there are a host of fantastic artists that have worked on the X-Men over the years, but you know, it just seemed like the natural progression and evolution of what is, uh, you know, one of the sexiest art books in all of comicdom. But he had a way of keeping his action, you know, hard-hitting and, you know, full-fisted and full-throated that, uh, you know, it, it didn't, uh, it, it stayed true to the comic medium and especially to um, the idiom and syntax, comic syntax created by late great Jack Kirby so on a note about speculators honestly they come in and, and ruin this hobby from time to time you know I've I've been at conventions where I would go to get something signed and um, I've talked about this in my videos before where I, d I don't really I'm not a big autograph collector I have a handful of autographs that I've collected over the years because I was going to all these conventions mainly to talk and trade ideas with creative individuals that I might admire, whether they be writers like Harlan Ellison or Chris Claremont, or if they are, um, you know, great artists. Now, mind you, I've never gotten to talk to Jim Lee. The line to meet him was tremendous, and um, he always had a huge price attached to, uh, to getting him to sign anything. And basically, you can't get in line if you're not going to have anything signed so um, the best I could ever do was go and see him speak at um, at Q&A's and, and whatnot but I remember being in in line to get something signed just because it's like well I'm doing this anyway it gives me a chance to just to talk to these people so I'll get these few books signed and going in behind speculators or even, I guess, comic shop owners. And they would have small 
long boxes, short boxes, I guess is what they're called, small long box, <laughs> um, of comics, and they would just, just stack them on the table, you know, to get free autographs on each one, and then what do they do? They turn around and, and boom, they, they sell it on eBay, or they're selling it in their store for, you know, exorbitant prices, and, um, you know, it's been a, just a detriment to the hobby over the years. And these speculators always come and go. Whenever something happens that that suddenly draws attention to comic book dumb, they come flooding in, you know, these greasy three-piece cheap suit-wearing guys, you know, with their hair slicked back and pencil-thin mustaches chewing on toothpicks and what have you. I suppose the first time in my lifetime was in the early it was either the early 90s or very late 80s when um, when a copy of Action Comics was sold for a ton of money. Then all of a sudden people were like, oh, well, comics are worth money. And that was the beginning of the speculator boom and the eventual glut and crash of the mid-90s where people thought, oh, well, number first appearance comics, number one comics are, are worth a lot of money. So the, the markets, the comic book companies tried to please these speculators by having a constant flood of number ones and you know and in, in the end it almost killed the entire market you know the the uh, the comic industry has not recovered from that completely it, it's kind of just on life support now because of the popularity of of the films once the mcu started up we had a whole new speculator market and started up like oh well now any of these first appearances of any of these characters is going to be worth more money. It's good for those of us that have been in the hobby for a while and we've accumulated these bits and pieces and oddities, you know, like I sold my Invincible number one for a, for a ch good chunk of money. Um, something I never wanted to sell, but also never thought it would be worth selling. But once the, the dollars get up high enough, you're like, hey, let me just go ahead and sell this. So anyway, long story short, Speculators do this, is that they, for years and years and years, they've taken advantage of the artists and writers that would offer free autographs or a quick sketch here or there, and then they would turn around and, and sell it for a whole lot of money. Now, who knows about this Jim Lee? I mean, maybe this guy paid 20 grand for it, and he wants to make six grand off of it, you know? He turned around and, he, you know, he paid to have it drawn, and now he's turned around and have it sold, so... Yes, more power to you, but that's the way it works. So let's let's look at what started all of this, okay? If I can find my oh, it's right here next to this. Okay, so Jim Lee posts um, his commission prices: eleven by seventeen inches, full figure, one character with limited backgrounds for twenty grand. Okay, more than one character or extra backgrounds. A recreation of other covers not drawn by Jim will be 25 grand to 35 grand. So I guess basically this is his agent posting this, but speaking for Jim. Then they go on 9 by 12 inches waist up figure, 9,000 to 15,000, small headshot, 1,000. Blank comic cover, only bus shot, no background, 8,000. And 12K if a wraparound. Jim will supply the blank cover comic, but you can supply at the show if you like. And um, some people went nuts. You know, I, I didn't pay attention to it. I wish I would have captured all of the responses that I that I saw. But you never quite know what, <laughs> you know, which way the wind is going to blow in this crazy world nowadays. Especially now that social media has made everything worse. So people started complaining. Now I've taken most of the names out here. So we've got a few examples um, here's Bruno. Jim Lee's art is phenomenal. These prices are not. I get his time is worth a lot, but what a nice big middle finger to everyone that has supported the industry over decades. Like, what does that even mean? How is that a middle finger to everyone that supported the industry over decades? So this is an artist creating a piece of art, and he's doing commissions, which I, I can't believe that Jim Lee actually has time to do any sort of commission, but I guess this is how he budgets out his time. I mean, the guy is running DC Comics, and still drawing books of his own. So, you know, it's almost just a waste of time for him to do any sort of commission. You know, I'd be afraid to see what Alex Ross's prices are, you know. So, here we go. Um, 
considering that his cheapest option is my whole paycheck and the next option up is about three months of paychecks for me and I'm a bit above minimum wage for my state, that's a big ask. Not to mention the cost of going to a show on top of that, travel tickets, time off from work, etc., etc. Like, what is the point here? I mean, this is just, I've talked about this bizarro attitude of entitlement and victimhood that's pervasive in the last few generations. I would say it even goes back as far as Gen X, you know, my generation. I, I, I don't understand it. You know, people program themselves to be victims with their everyday language. You know, if you get a flat tire, they say, oh, this always happens to me. You know, I mean, it's like a self-brainwashing, a self-hypnotism. Um, you know, I'm binge watching everything on Netflix. I prefer to say power watch. I power watched it <laughs> whole season, but you know, binge has more of a negative connotation to it. And there's this, this constant victimhood just hooked into the very language and therefore underlying the psyches of generations. And it's, it's sad. It's sad to see actually. It is phenomenal, just not for the customer. Like, what is this? Not for the customer. I mean, if you could pay twenty grand to get Jim Lee to do a cover, I would love to be able to get him to do a uh, Death Blow cover, or I guess maybe a Wolverine. You know, I don't quite understand people that ask artists to draw characters that they've never worked on. I don't understand that, but I understand people finding joy in those little things. Um, like a friend of mine online, uh, Scott, he goes and has everybody draw Kitty Pride when he goes to these conventions. So every artist he goes to, he says, I want a Kitty Pride sketch. So he has a collection of Kitty Pride sketches from all these different artists. That's not my thing, but I'm not going to begrudge Scott that bit of joy. If that's something he enjoys and he has that, you know, more power to you. I mean, these collections of art, you know, especially if one is an artist, if you are creative, they're like totems. They're totems of power. You know, I have the signatures that I have here in my studio, um, which you can't see because I have the Comic Jutsu banner up behind me. But the ones that I have, they're all carefully chosen from my lifetime of encounters, whether it be at these conventions or events or screenings or signings or what have you. They're carefully chosen things that mean a lot to me. So, you know. I find those empowering, so I, I won't begrudge anyone else that. Here John says, think these prices are bad, just wait until you see how much he gets paid just to show up. So again, it's like, how dare you get paid, Jim Lee? I mean, the guy's an artist. He fought to, to get to where he is. He fought to get into Marvel. He fought to get onto the X-Men. He fought to help create Image, you know. He's had never-ending battle after never-ending battle. You know, what him selling Wildstorm to DC and, and then away, what that did to all the creators involved is a different conversation. But again, I still don't begrudge him doing what he had to do in order to, to make money with his uh, intellectual properties. Here, Anthony says, I'd rather buy a car. Harold says, ridiculous. Dan, geez, well, smoke them if you got them. Again, just this pervasive entitlement, victimhood, I don't understand it. I do not understand it. For the most part, you know, creative individuals have uh, been extremely supportive of Jim. I've got a couple other artist edition worthy pieces. There another another death blow piece. I like how you can see he used markers on all this. Really like his death blow work. Um and then there's a little Gambit and Rogue for you, Jim Lee. Very nicely done. So if you're a Gambit and Rogue fan, who better than Jim Lee to illustrate that for you? For the most part, you know, uh, creatives have been unified behind it. I thought I had it pulled up, but I don't. So let me try again. Um, here we go. Load that up for you. This is not an ad for Comic Jutsu, although it actually is. Which, by the way, watch my video on AI art theft or the John Byrne covers you've never seen or catch up with Samurai Sunday or even watch my fight breakdown of CM Punk uh, assaulting, um, allegedly assaulting the scapegoat backstage at Brawl Land because I break that fight down for you 
in terms of psychology and also what actually happened from a technical standpoint, which you're not going to see anywhere else. Okay, so here we go. Um, people have a great relationship with entitlement nowadays. I'm just looking at the very first one on the top. Man, that's exactly what I just said. It's like, I can't afford a Jim Lee commission, and like Jimmy said, it's okay, I just won't get one. I won't lose sleep. I have a roof over my head, food in the fridge. Life will still be okay. Jim Lee's influence, talent, and legacy puts him up there, and once he's died, people will profit off of him by the thousands, much like with Jack Kirby and so on and so forth. You can go through the history of comic dumb and, and beyond that to art and um, you know see how these sellers have benefited in ways that the original artist never did so that's why as artists you have to accept a certain you have to come to terms with accepting that you're creating the art to create it and if something happens where you can make money off of it go for it do it no one owes you anything no one's going to hand you anything. No one's going to give you anything. So you have to take it when you could get it. Artistic value is subjective. Some might argue Picasso has no artistic value and Jim Lee does and vice versa. It's just a cheap talking point to screw the artist. So, so on and so forth. Um, majority of the professionals are all like, yeah, he should, he should charge that. And why shouldn't they support this? Because... It's, it's the old adage, you know, the rising tide raises all ships in the harbor. If Jim Lee can, can charge that much, well, now maybe Jim Stranko can charge more. Or when he was alive, maybe Neil Adams could charge more. Or, um, you know, maybe now Andy or Adam Kubert will charge more. You know, they, they should get what they can get because this business, comicdom has always been cutthroat. It's still cutthroat. In a lot of ways, the business has become even more cutthroat and destructive since the rise of the popularity of superhero films in the MCU and the DC, you know, filmic universe, whatever that's called. Because now you have these people that are just desperate to get into it, and they see comics not as a form of artwork or a medium unto itself, but as a gateway into, you know, the MCU or DC films. Or what have you. So yeah, so get what you can. And uh, I'm, I'm glad that, that Jim can charge that for it. You know, I'm reminded of when the RZA put together the Lost Wu-Tang album. I don't know if you guys remember that from a few years ago. And he, uh, he was the only one that really had it all put together in his head. And he would bring in artists and have them cut tracks or drop this rhyme here, this this piece there, he throw this sample over it, this and that, and then all of a sudden, poof, he put it together and made this, this lost Wu-Tang album, and they made one, and they printed one, and it's got this brilliant case to it, and they wound up selling it for like a million dollars to that, that scumbag, Martin Shkreli, who eventually went to jail. As far as I know, he's still in jail, though he might be out now. But anyway, so they made it as a piece of art, it wasn't mass produced for the masses but you know RZA said well whoever buys it they can do whatever they want to with it you know do whatever they want to with it if they want to share it with the world they can share it with the world if they want to keep it to themselves and just have the one album then so be it so there you go so artists get what you can get complainers quit your complaining reprogram yourselves get out of this victimhood mentality before it's too late for you but for most of you if you are a part of that victim mentality you convinced yourself a long time ago that you're always going to be a victim and that's never going to change for you but here at comic jutsu we keep play 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 because all we do is win 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 so thanks for watching like comment subscribe down below buy my graphic novel when it's available there will be more than one copy though maybe i should only make one and sell that for a million maybe that's the thing to do who knows see you next time